We want to trade there right now. You'll notice that there is also an oak planted fairly close by it, too close actually. We didn't do the placing, we relied on somebody else to do it, which was a mistake. But, you know, the day will come when that oak grows up that we cut that sycamore down and we're rid of it. But if you're sitting out there in the middle of nowhere, you've got zero trees on your property, is a, chi is a Mexican sycamore the best tree to plant? For you it probably is, because you're going to get a big tree, you're going to get shade in a hurry. For a person who has six big beautiful live oaks, five cedar elms, and some other nice trees on their property, should they plant a Mexican sycamore? Probably not. You know, you're not looking for instant growth and instant shade. So the plant that's a good plant for one person may be a very bad plant for another. The person who has a junkyard next door, even though it may just be the people that live there that have created a junkyard, Japanese ligustrum, that plant right over there, probably a good thing. Going to grow 20 feet tall in about five years. That's way too much, and that thing's going to become a horrible weed for some people. But for the person that needed the instant screen to block out the Home Depot that was being built next door, or the uh, less than top quality neighbor that moved in next door, or whatever else, it's the right plant. So it's real hard to say what's good, what's bad. And it's, it's up to you to figure it out. Now, there are people around who will give you all the help that they possibly can. And don't ever be embarrassed to ask questions because that's the only way you're going to learn about these things. That's like one gardener told me one time. She says that there's no weed. If you want the plant in your yard, it's considered a plant. Uh, you know, it's a plant you want. The only weeds in your whole your gar garden is the ones you don't want. Yeah. Someday, again, we've got to get them to sell, but that little book I refer to sometimes, uh, this book of gardening definitions, you really need to get that and read it because in many ways it tells it like it is. Their definition of a lie is a common form of shorthand plant description used as a convenience by many nurseries. <laughs> we well, don't do that, but I'm afraid that you'll find that in some places around. So, again, you know, part of uh, of your landscape planning is act is asking yourself, short term, long term, what do I need right now? What am I willing to wait for? And like I say, diversity, diversity, diversity. I just can't say that enough. How many people planted all their flower beds with English ivy, and then last year in all the rain it folded up and died, and they had to start over? Uh, the wise gardener probably planted one with Vinca Minor, one with English Ivy, one with Asiatic Jasmine, one with Dwarf Monkey Grass. So now they've got one bed to replace instead of four beds. Same thing goes for just about everything in your landscape. Strive for diversity. And maybe you want your home to be formal. Maybe you want things to match fairly much on either side. That's fine. If you want a row of boxwood along those windows under either side, that's great. But don't plant them on the side of your house, the backyard, and out by the street as well. Try to get as much diversity in the landscape as you can. Understand how big things are going to get at maturity. Everybody's probably seen my little black lab puppy, and I know that she's going to grow into a 70-pound dog. But a person who goes out and sees that cute little black puppy that lives in a 900-square-foot apartment and has no green belt anywhere around, that would be the totally wrong dog for you. Don't be misled. I'm not going to ask what that big grin's about. But anyway, <laughs> just because a plant looks beautiful at the nursery, it's, uh, you know, it might not be the right plant. Understand what it is going to grow up into before you plant it. And uh, very importantly, understand how much sun a plant requires to do well. Now, last week I told you to consider that the sun moves from season to season. Winter months, the sun's way over there in the southern part of the sky. Summer months, it's way up here in the northern part of the sky. Yesterday, it reached its maximum northern movement. It's the first day of summer. Uh, and, you know, choose the plants accordingly. If you've got a shady area, you definitely do not want to plant, you know, Yopon Holly in it, something like that, the big Yopons especially. you got a really sunny area, you do not want to plant Gold Dust to Cuba. Understand how much sun a plant gets before you buy it, and if you're not sure, ask. And again, if you need to play the same game for your own personal satisfaction that we play in the seminars here, it's perfectly okay to go into the nursery and tell the guy or gal, whoever, 
my neighbor wanted me to ask you about this particular plant. You don't have to admit that you don't know what it is or what you're doing. It's just like I tell you in here, if you don't want to admit to a problem in your own yard, stick up your hand and say, well, my neighbor wanted me to ask you about such and such. But, but make sure you understand the size of the plant. Make sure you understand the light requirements of the plant. Make sure you understand the water requirements of a plant because there are some plants which need perfect drainage. There are other plants that prefer having wet feet. Lots of people here love redbud trees. Most everybody, y'all love redbuds, don't you? Mm -hmm. Don't plant it in a wet area. The tree will fold up and die on you. Uh, if you have very shallow soil, don't even think about planting a pecan tree. I don't care how much you love pecan trees. If you just have to have a pecan tree in your yard, move. Find a different place, because that's the only way you're going to be successful with it. Now, in some cases, there are ways around the problem. You have a drainage issue, but you still want a red bud. So what are you going to do? You know, we talked about berming up an area to create more of a three-dimensional look. Berm up the area and plant that red bud above ground level so that it has good drainage. You need to do just fine. I don't really recommend it for a pecan tree, but let's say you have a tree that has a deeper root system. Create a big raised bed somewhere and plant it if that's what you want to do. The four oak trees that are right up toward the front of this property. When we first uh, opened the nursery, there was a very high water table. There was actually a spring on this property. We planted a couple of big oaks in the ground and they folded up and died. And we didn't do what we should have done, and that is check the water first. I'll tell you about that in just a second. But what did we do? Well, we got four bald and burlap oak trees because we wanted big trees. We did it at the right time of year. We had the guy bring them in and set the tree on top of the ground. And then we built up the planters around them and filled the soil up to the right level. Those roots then found their way into soil that was adaptable to their conditions and they've grown and done beautifully ever since then. But uh, something that I think that you should do everywhere you plant anything is dig the hole first. I'll talk about digging a hole in a minute. Dig the hole first, fill it with water, and see how quickly all the water drains out. If the water doesn't drain out within eight or ten hours, you've got a problem. Uh, you either plant something to tolerate wet feet, which is virtually nothing when it comes to trees and shrubs, or you create a raised bed or a bermed up area, or you figure out a way to get the water leveled down in the soil. We talked about French drains and things like that. But there are a lot of people kill plants by forgetting to check and see whether the soil drains well or not. And certain things like redbud, like mountain laurel, demand perfect drainage. And if your soil doesn't drain well, the only way you're going to be able to grow those is by berming up an area or creating a raised bed. So check the porosity, so to speak, of the soil anywhere you plant and everywhere you plant. If you are moving into a new home especially, Dig down right around the foundation of your home in several different places and see if you find dirt. Unfortunately, what you will find many times is sheetrock, mortar slag, and everything that the contractor dumped in there when they built the house. If that's the case, pay the money to get somebody in there to clean all this out and get rid of it and put decent soil in there. Otherwise, you're going to plant the plants. The plants are going to do poorly and then you're going to have to do what you should have done in the first place. And, you know, the builders, it's, it's kind, of like, kind of like a lot of things. You can cover up a lot of defects with a coat of paint. That's what, in effect, the builder is going to do in a lot of cases. He's going to cover the ground with an inch of soil, and it looks absolutely beautiful. Find out for yourself what's underneath it before you start buying plants and putting plants in the ground. And a lot of times, you will head off problems. Now, another thing to ask yourself about plants is how happy they are with alkaline soil. Because our soils here are very alkaline. Many plants are very happy. Mountain laurels love alkaline soil, since we're talking about uh, mountain laurels. Don't grow in Houston. Soil's too acidic. People over there in Houston are bringing plants in from the hill country and wondering why they die. Every hunter that goes to Colorado brings back a blue spruce, and a year or two later is always dead but ask yourself whether it likes the soil conditions here or not. Now some things are marginal. The true spiny hollies here, the Burford holly, the Chinese holly, the Carissa holly, the Foster's holly, a lot of these good hollies are sort of borderline. They can take our alkaline soils, but they don't want them to be any more alkaline than they already are. 
And if you put a Burford holly, a dwarf Burford holly probably, into a flower bed where there is either a lot of sheetrock dumped in there, it's going to make soil a lot more alkaline, or when they built your home, if it's built of brick or rock, if they just all the mortar that fell out while they were building piled up in your flower bed, makes the soil extremely